Hi, Carol. Thank you so much for being part of the summit. I'm so happy to talk with you today. Hi, Dallas. Thrilled to be here. Let me just read your bio for people if they haven't met you yet, and then we'll dive right into this topic. I'm so excited. So Carol is the award-winning author of the Goodbye Orchid series, and she's also a public speaker and an MBA with 20 plus years experience in marketing strategy and insights. Plus she works in chocolate. There's no sweeter job. Carol is passionate about simplifying marketing concepts into actionable steps for publishing success. She's keynoted and presented at conferences like Writers Digest, IBPA, International Women's Writing Guild, Rutgers Writers Conference, Sisters in Crime, and Women Who Write. She's also a regular contributor to DIY MFA, where she pens the author marketing toolkit column. So welcome, Carol. Thank you so much for being here. Good to see you, Dallas. And um, I'm excited to talk with you today about book awards and how to win awards from your for your book and kind of getting into like um, some strategy there and also maybe some mindset there because you have won. Your books are so wonderfully written. I've had the pleasure of reading an advanced copy of your next book that's coming out, Orchid Blooming. Um, and I just love your writing so much. It's so immersive and the way you write your characters is just so beautiful. And so I think the first step of winning book awards is like, you have to write a really, you know, write your best book that you can write. Um, but I've just been so amazed by all the awards that your books have won. And I think, um, you're just the perfect person to talk about this topic. So, um, thank you so much for being here. First of all, thank you for those kind words. It means a lot coming from you, Dallas, because your work is so beautiful and so thoughtful. And um, yeah, I've shared with you before how much I am a fan of your work. So thank you for the kind words. And yes, I think that award-winning has become part of the brand for the Goodbye Orchid series, which um, Goodbye Orchid was the debut novel and Orchid Blooming is coming out in September, that the um, books have actually won, Goodbye Orchid has um, won 16 mm -hmm. design and literary awards and Orchid Blooming, which is still a month out before release has already been recognized four times by awards. Wow. So it has been 20 in total. It's um, much more than I would have expected. It's just blown away my expectations. So I think it's a really reasonable question you ask is, you know, um, how do you find awards and, and what do they mean and why are they, why do they matter to an author? So I would start first because in my day job, I'm a strategist and I'm a marketer as well as a digital um, executive. And so I actually love to start with strategy before getting into the tactics. Mm -hmm. And the way I think about it when I think about marketing as an author in total is that we are trying to really um, leverage the art and science of marketing to find and motivate our readers, the readers for whom our work is going to benefit. And you're absolutely right about the quality of the work. That is, first and foremost, we need to deliver an amazing, immersive experience, et cetera. And then when I think about how, once I have the work in hand, how to market that, there are different phases or a funnel that we're bringing readers along. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to create awareness among the readers that are the right target audience for us. And we're also trying to share with that reader the hook or the reason they would be personally interested in that message or the benefit of the writing that we're doing. But third, it's really important to, especially for a debut author, and my um, novel debuted at the end of 2020. Mm -hmm. So actually at that time, I was building a brand and needed to have Author, needed to have readers who knew nothing about me to know what I stood for, to know what Goodbye Orchid stood for. And so the third bucket of credibility mm -hmm. is where book contests can fall. Book contests, as well as reviews from professional sources, reviews from other authors. And also um, there's credibility that comes from reviews from readers. I think that there's a lot of trust when it comes to getting either word of mouth recommendations from people that you know, for your friends, your family, or even seeing other people's recommendations or their reviews, whether it be on Goodreads or on Amazon, on BookBub, et cetera, it helps create a feeling, okay, this is the type of book that I'm going into and whether it's for me or not. And so first and foremost, I would just put book contests in the context of this credibility bucket 
which is really critical, especially for debut authors. Now, yeah, I love, that. I love that. Thank you for just kind of setting the context there and showing because I think it's just so helpful to see kind of like the broader picture and why we are looking for this. So also, I see, feel like people don't have to get too attached to um, a single contest, but it's more like that bucket, that credibility bucket that we're trying to fill up. Exactly. And then within the credibility bucket, I do find that contests are wonderful. It's wonderful from a few standpoints. One, I think that writers, we spend so much work and it is such, it can be such hard work putting our writing out there. And so it is a nice, honestly, pat on the back for ourselves. And we should celebrate that moment and feel great about that moment when we are recognized by an award or a contest. And it is such an accomplishment. I'm always so happy when I see my fellow authors, you know, sharing the awards that they're winning. Also, besides the own personal pride, there is the opportunity then to share that award, to let people know, to let readers know so that it gives you something to talk about, something that is meaningful, something that is authentic, something that um, is you know, true and, and coming from your heart when you're so excited to be able to share mm -hmm. that you've won an award. Um, and then I think that for me, I had set some goals. Um, so when I was thinking about before the launch of Goodbye Orchid, I wanted Goodbye Orchid to be not just award winning, which would be lovely, but also multi award winning. So I had set a goal that I wanted to have at least two awards before the publication date so that um, at the time of release that we would be able to say Goodbye Orchid was multi award winning. And I was so happy that Goodbye Orchid had both the American Fiction Award as well as the Pinnacle Achievement Award before publication. And then the other 14 awards came in after that. Um, and each one surprised me, you know, and it was just an amazing, lovely experience. A few tips I would share with authors who are listening out there and thinking, okay, well, this is interesting. I know I do want to build credibility for my book and for my author brand. I would like to try to enter some contests. So how are some ways to think about this? Well, one thing that I found very helpful was to understand the aspects of my book that were fairly um, unique or memorable or where would my book play so that I would know what category to place the book into um, and therefore have a higher chance of winning and also um, for it to be able to communicate what the book was about. So for instance, this, the types of awards that Goodbye Orchid has won are quite instructive on what the book is about. And so there's a set of awards in which Goodbye Orchid has won for multicultural fiction. And that's because the main character, Orchid Page, is half Asian. And the relationship between Orchid and the entrepreneur, Phoenix Walker, is an interracial um, romantic relationship. And so multicultural fiction is a really great way to cue that that's what you're going to get when you enter my world. And also the book has won awards for disability awareness. And that's very important to me because the books have been inspired by combat wounded veterans. And this is the, it, you know, I want to share that that's the inspiration that these books give back to military um, veterans and their families through organizations like USA Cares. And so that's another series of awards that help tell readers what the book is about and what they're going to get from it. And then a third set is the book has also won awards for women's fiction. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important as well, the character growth of Orchid Page throughout Goodbye Orchid, and also especially Orchid Blooming, the new book that's coming out in September, actually is very much women's fiction. Um, how she you know, really comes to understand her challenges and overcomes them is absolutely women's fiction. And I think that's one of the top tips when it comes to contests is within the contest to be able to choose the category really well in yeah. which it's going to really fit your work. Have you found that too, Dallas? I think that's such great advice, just really knowing your book well and being able to pick, like you're saying, the contests that offer those specific categories that fit it really well and then being really um being as detailed as possible like you're saying into which categories um your book really shines in and i love how you're describing it as it's also giving the reader information <clears throat> when they see the award 
you're signaling to them certain aspects of what this book is and what they're, what they can expect when they get into the book. So I love that. And I think that it's also fun for readers to just to brainstorm what different categories might your book fall into. I think it might kind of open some, um, some new awareness when you're even trying to spread the word about your book or market to readers. Yeah, it's such a good point. And I I actually, I want to share too another tool that I have found very helpful when it comes to book contests. So there are a lot of contests out there. And I actually write about this in my DIY MFA column called Author Marketing Toolkit. I talk about book award contests. And of course, there are the incredibly, you know, famous national and international ones that Debut authors probably have a hard time striving to think that we can, you know, um, qualify for a pen award or one of these Mm -hmm. amazing ones. And of course, if authors who are listening have, you know, are in the running for those or long listed or short listed, many congratulations. That's an incredible feat. However, there are other there's a series of contests as well beyond that. So there are ones that are either genre specific, there are ones that, um, you know, there are annual ones, there are also ones that happen more frequently, some actually run every quarter, I've seen some run every month. And so there's really quite um, a wide variety of ones to take a look at. One resource I have found very helpful is called Book Award Pro. Oh, great. I'll, I'll link to that. Yeah, so Book Award Pro, let me tell you a little bit about it. It's a service in which they employ AI or artificial intelligence to match up the awards that best fit your book. Mm -hmm. And they alert you when it's coming up to time to be submitting to that particular contest so that you don't have to feel so overwhelmed, you know, just kind of Googling Book Award contests, seeing, you know, so many that are out there, but to have a very systematized way to let you know about what contests are coming up. And for a fee, you can even have them submit for wow. to a contest for you. So what you do is you upload your manuscript, you upload your book cover, you fill out a questionnaire to share information about genre and the type of book that it is for the AI and the algorithm to work to be able to, to suggest contests to you. I find that really helpful so that I don't have to you know, feel that I need to know all the contests that are out there and really be picking among them, but rather to be picking among from this curated list that is more customized to me. And I still don't apply to all of the ones that come to me through Book Award Pro, but it really does give such a good starting place. That is such a wonderful resource. Thanks for sharing that, Carol, because I think sometimes, as you're mentioning, it can just be even so overwhelming, just beginning the process and Googling book awards and not you know, not quite knowing which ones are a good fit or feeling like sometimes there's so many out there that we feel too overwhelmed and don't even choose to enter any. So that is such a great resource to get started. Yeah. And, you know, you bring up a good point, you know, when I think about objections that I've heard when people, when authors are, you know, thinking maybe I shouldn't apply to um, book award contests. One of the things I hear about, and not just about book awards, but about marketing our books in general, is this idea that it's kind of icky to be Mm self-promoting. And I talk about this in a workshop I give. I have five foundational workshops that I give at writers' conferences when I speak at conferences. One of them is around marketing mindset. And the reason this particular workshop came about was as I was teaching other marketing workshops to authors, I found that authors were saying, I understand the content you're providing. It makes sense to me and I believe it, but I can't find my, I can't do it myself because I'm so uncomfortable Mm -hmm. with promoting myself. And in fact, one author, a lovely woman named Ginger raised her hand and she said, you know what? I feel so uncomfortable marketing myself. I don't even feel comfortable putting the name of my book in my email signature which is such a simple passive thing that can be done. And so I helped reframe it. And I find that when I talk about this in the marketing mindset class, it helps. So it would help with contests as well. The idea is to shift your thinking from thinking that marketing means the spotlight is on you Mm -hmm. to the spotlight is actually on your message or the benefit to the audience or the work that you're trying to do in the world. And in Ginger's example, I knew the background of her story. She'd written um, Kid Lit. She'd written a picture book. And she wrote a book called Look Left, Look Right, 
and it was about teaching children to cross the road safely. Mm -hmm. She wrote that book because as a child, she herself had been hit by a car. She survived and she was um, okay, but she wanted to, from that experience, help other children to not have that experience. And so there's such a strong why behind her work, behind her books, such a strong mission. Mm -hmm. And so I said, if you shift the thinking that marketing is about self-promotion and self-aggrandizement and about ego, if you shift it to what is the mission that you have, then you can feel comfortable about shining a light and um, putting a spotlight on that mission because that mission is important to you. And that is often when I give my personal brand workshop where I start is by asking authors their why, their inspiring purpose, the reason they do the work they do beyond the obvious profit and functional purposes. Mm -hmm. I love that so much, Carol. And I think that's kind of a continuation of something that I talk with a lot of my clients about during the process of writing a book when we sometimes can feel stuck or blocked or we're we're thinking, I don't know if I can go on. I don't know if I can finish this. And I always, we talk about kind of shifting outward into um, thinking about that greater why, thinking about how we hope that our book will touch or inform readers or help readers. Or even sometimes I like to think about books that have really impacted my life and how grateful I am that those authors didn't give up. And I feel like this whole, that whole mindset shift is just a continuation of that into when then you're marketing your book. So you've written it, you've published it. Now it's, it's the time to really share it. And there's, there are readers out there who are waiting, who are just waiting for your book and they just have to learn about it. So I think that's so helpful. Do you feel like if someone, um, I mean, I think it's similar if someone's feeling shy about entering a book contest, almost like those, um, those gremlins we sometimes get in our heads that say, well, there's no way I would win or, you know, my book isn't as, can't be as good as these other books. Do you have advice? I mean, um, maybe just thinking about those readers that you want to impact, or has there been any mind shift, mindset shifts around feeling, um, not good enough or imposter syndrome that can come up when submitting to contests or awards? Yeah, that's such a great question. Really insightful. And I have two thoughts. One, I was recently interviewed by my alma mater. Rutgers put an um, article out about ways in which um, I've been able to demonstrate reinvention in my life. And part Mm. of the, so they actually, they published seven tenets that they learned from me in interviewing me. It's actually a lovely article if anybody wants to take a look for it. But one of the things I share in that interview is that the regret question can be very illuminating. Mm. So what would you regret more? Would you regret if you entered a contest and maybe didn't in that particular for that particular book, didn't win, didn't place, didn't have recognition? Or would you regret never having tried and not knowing if your book Mm. may have been recognized in that contest? Mm -hmm. And I think the answer to that question can help encourage people and give people the courage to enter if they are feeling that way. Um, And then the second area I'm thinking about is I just finished a course at Yale at the women on boards course, because I'm really getting myself ready. I'm um, board ready for corporate board positions. And so I'm looking for those corporate board positions next. And my, one of my mentors who is a multi, you know, board serving member who's been CEO of multiple companies wrote a book about imposter syndrome. Wow. And I think that's what you're talking about. You know, that type of self-talk, which says, you know, maybe I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. Um, And actually one thing that helps, you know, that she talks about in her book, her name is um, Joyce Roach, R-O-C-H-E. And her book is The Empress Has No Clothes. She talks about the idea, just knowing that something like 80% of people at times have that feeling helps us realize we're all just human and we're all just doing the best we can. And um, so why not? Why not enter the contest and give it a try? Mm -hmm. I love that perspective, both of those things. And I think really celebrating something I try to do whenever I'm submitting, whether it's submitting a book to a publisher or submitting for an award is celebrating that brave action of submitting, like celebrating what we have control over. So I always, instead of waiting 
to hear if I won the award. Obviously, if you hear good news that you win an award, that's time to celebrate too. But I think also just celebrating that brave action of submitting your book for an award, um, especially if it's something that you feel nervous about or that feels like a big step for you, doing something special just to celebrate taking that action because that, to me, I feel like that's really where the big win is, regardless of what ends up happening, that you're being brave enough to take this step. Um, for you and for your book and, and for your future readers. Actually, what you're saying there, Dallas, is reminding me another good point, which I find helpful for myself. And that is a lesson I've learned now that I'm a published author, and I see the variety of reactions that readers have to the exact same material. Mm. The way in which people interpret the motivations behind characters' actions, the how wide-ranging that is, leads me to understand that so much of the experience of a reader and that come and comes down to a judge as well in a contest comes from what they're bringing to the story. It's mm -hmm. not only what we've put on the page. So we can't take total responsibility for how somebody reacts positively or not to our story because it's a combination of the story that's on the page plus what that person's bringing from their own life experiences and the lens with which they see things. And I think that helps take a bit of the pressure off so that if there's a contest that perhaps you don't place in, you don't get an award, you don't win, then, you know, you don't know. That doesn't mean your book is bad or your writing is bad. Perhaps that particular judge, it is a subjective art in the end. Mm -hmm. Perhaps that particular judge didn't resonate for whatever reasons that might be out of your control to your earlier point, Dallas. Mm -hmm. I love it. Such a great reminder. Um, well, Carol, I could just talk with you all day about writing and, and everything. Um, thank you so much for your time and so many great tidbits, not just about entering contests, but about overall like building credibility for your book and just some mindset shifts for us to think about when we're marketing. Um, and you have so just so much other wisdom and just gems to share. We mentioned your column at DIY MFA, if people want to check that out. And then also, I wanted to just give a little plug because as you mentioned, um, your next book, so you have Goodbye Orchid, which is the 16 award winner. That is beautiful. I highly recommend. And then Orchid Bloomy in the prequel is coming out very soon, especially when this is released. Um, so I really want to want you to share with people how they can find you, how they can follow you, both to read your beautiful books, but even as an author to study the way that you are doing this launch campaign for your book with your newsletter, with your social accounts. I think that is even reason enough right there to sign up, to follow you, to learn from the masterful way that you are um, marketing your book. So can you share, and I know you also have a free gift for our attendees too. So do you want to just share the best ways for people to do that? Thanks so kindly for that, Dallas. I really appreciate it. And I would absolutely welcome all of the attendees, the authors at the summit to um, join me. You know, I think we're all on this bookish journey together and that we can come together as a community. So please, you know, visit my website, sign up for my newsletter. I'm at carolvandenhenda.com. I know my last name is a mouthful. So if there is a short version, which is if you go to my link tree, L I N K T R dot E E slash C V D H. That's basically my initials, Carol Vanden Henda, C V D H. That will give a link to my website so you can sign up for my newsletter. Feel free to connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, all of the places. And also um, definitely check out the DIY MFA column. There is a, an article specifically on book contests. So you might be interested if that's a topic that is intriguing you. Read a little bit more there. See what ideas it gives you. Feel free to comment right on the website and I'll see those comments and be able to respond. And then, yes, in terms of the free giveaway, I'd love for um, authors who are interested to go ahead and sign up to get my chapter one of Orchid Blooming. Um, it's coming out September 13th. There's a book funnel link, which will be in the show notes that um, you can 
go ahead and sign up to get chapter one. And I hope you love it. And please let me know what you think. Of course, all authors know that reviews are incredibly important. I always try to leave reviews for the books that I read, including Dallas's. And so if you read Goodbye Orchid or Orchid Blooming or Dallas's books, please leave a review for us. Um, and we'll do the same back for you if we're reading your work. Thanks so much. I love that, Carol. Well, and congratulations on um, the new your new multi-award winning book. Um, so excited to see what happens with Orchid Blooming. And just thank you so much for your time. And you have such a wonderful like energy about you that I just think is so inspiring and just makes us feel like we can do it too. So thank you so much. Thank you, Dallas.